Okay, so room stat, let's check first. Do we have power at our common? Uh, is there a neutral terminal here? Yep, number two. Okay, so we've got 230 on neutral. That's turned up. Do we have 230? Yep, we've got 230 on the switch as well. So I reckon it's going to be a dodgy synchro motor. Let's go and check the three port. How are you doing everyone? Thank you for tuning in to today's video. So it's a fairly short video, two jobs on there, both breakdowns. I hope you find them interesting. One is related to a three port. The other one is related to an external pump on a uh, heat only boiler, pressurized system. So fairly straightforward to do, but I'll just go through the steps of how I diagnose the faults and how I go ahead and repair them. So hope it's something that you guys find useful. So before we get onto the videos, I just want to mention Velocity Pro Gear. They've got a St. Patrick's Day offer on at the moment. So you've got two tiers of bags that you can get. If you get a bag from the Dead Drop Zone 1, you'll get the Velocity Cooler. I did have it here. It, uh, no, I think I put it back in the shed. I had it here for Ivan's birthday party and it worked a treat. Uh, it keeps everything cold as a cooler does. I think I'm probably going to keep it for... I'm probably going to keep it in the shed so when the weather gets a bit warmer and stuff and once I've started utilizing it as a workspace I can just keep drinks in there and keep it cool. It's also great for if you're going on a weekend break or a city break or seaside break or anything like that. Great to keep food and drink cool inside whilst you're driving and things like that. If you also get one from the dead drop zone 2 you get a free drill pod. Now the drill pod is brilliant because I thought it's a what one more, am I really going to utilize it? I do. I literally never have to look for a drill bit again because they're all just in one place and it's got loads of different compartments. So it's not just for drill bits. I've put, you can put multi-tool blades in there. You can fit, you know, you get the mini angle grinder discs in there. You can fit basically whatever you want in there. So I'll try and do a little video of how I've set mine up. I think I might have done a short for it. I'll, if I'll, I'll try and find it and I'll put it up again or I'll link it here somewhere. But go ahead to Velocity Progress website. I'll put the link in the description below. Go and check it out and bag yourself some good deals whilst they last. Enjoy the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, please. And I will see you all on the next one. Enjoy. Okay, so you guys might remember this one from another job, well, another visit previously where the f &E tank was turned off so there was no water in the system. Danny's called me back today because he's, had, he's having some problems with the heating. It's been working in the week, but since yesterday, or the day before, it's just completely stopped. So we're going to start at the source. We're going to start the programmer, turn that on for heating, turn the room stat up, and see what's going on with the three port in there. So let's just get this out of the way. Oh. So I want to see that three port motor over. I want to see if the pump comes on, and then I'll probably go up and check the F&E tank up again. I mean, it should be all okay, but let's first of all pop... So heating is on there. Three port is not motoring over at the moment. So let's go and check. Where's your now thermostat? The, if we put the hot water, then it will kick off. Yeah, no, so we just want to test the heating first. Oh, yeah. So where's your thermostat? Is it downstairs? Yeah, see, yeah. Right, let's go and check the thermostat. It's turned up. In the dining, in the dining room, yeah. Okay, let's just make sure that's oh, so that's on. Yeah, I turned it right off yeah. yesterday to see if that will help it. But apart from that, okay, so that's turned up all the way. Yeah. I'm gonna get my voltage testers, we'll get this open and see if we've got power going to this. Yeah. That'll tell us if the program is working at least, and then we'll see if this is sending power back upstairs. So let me go and get that first. Okay, so room stat, let's check first. Do we have power at our common? Uh, is there a neutral terminal here? Yep, number two. Okay, so we've got 230 on neutral. That's turned up. Do we have 230? Yep, we've got 230 on the switch as well. So I reckon 
it's going to be a dodgy synchro motor. Let's go and check the three port. Okay, so at the wiring center, just want to follow the cable back from the Zon valve, which is there. And I want to look for the white coming off of the Zon valve, which is here. That's going into that terminal there. So let's see, do we have power going in to there? Let me find an earth. Earth and yep, we've got 230 on there. So we've got power going to the zone valve, but zone valve is not motoring over. So I'm going to whip the whip the head off, change the synchro motor on that, and that should get us up back up and running. Okay, it's so got the head off, and that you can see I can move that nice and freely by hand. This, however, I can feel that synchro. Well, I don't know if you can hear that. Let me put that close to the microphone. If that picks up that buzzing noise, and if I try and motor it over, you can hear. See, I'm putting that just by the mic, so I don't know if it picks it up. Yeah, so let's get that synchro motor swapped out. Right, synchro motor's been swapped out. Now let's go and flick power back on. Right, that's getting with demand. That's motored over. Lovely stuff. And we want to check we should be getting heat. No, that's B. We're going to be getting heat through A, which we are. Uh, yeah, we're back in business. Nice, easy, quick repair done. But apologies for the poor lighting. I'll get another lights up in a minute. But I've got Pot and Suprema here, which is locking out. Came here a couple of days ago, and I saw that the oh, I don't even know what I can stand on or what I can't stand on here. Right, this pump is just rumbling. So that needs replacing. Uh, I'm going to replace the pump valve as well. I've covered it up, so I've got the job. So I'm here to do that. And also that AAV. I'm going to be swapping that out as well. The boiler, well, the system's currently showing zero pressure. It wasn't when I came here. So I'm going to check the PRV. But I reckon by the looks of the AAV, I'd hazard a guess that that's probably why the pressure's been dropping out. And also the pump valves, they look a bit ropey. So that's probably one of the reasons why it's dropping pressure so let's get those swapped out i've got everything here with me oh this lighting is terrible here oh i can't stand on that it's part of the same i was getting worried what i can stand on what i can't so got ourselves a new pump a new aav and a couple of new pump valves so let's get these swapped out let's get this system back up and running so managed to get this tube light on it was on a plug top and it's long enough there's a plug socket on the landing there so i plugged that in so i've got a bit more light here and got my other uni light up there so first things first i've shut the pump valves i know i'm going to be changing them but yeah i thought i shut them off anyway hopefully they do close off so when i crack this the water will just drip down into the rubble bag i've done away with them folding buckets because they're what about 10 12 pound a pop and ultimately they are going to rip at some point because they're getting thrashed about in the van and yeah so i've just gone back to good old days of rubble sack so i've literally just tucked it behind the pump so even if the valves are letting by the water will just go straight into the rubble sack so let's crack these get this pump out then if they've held then i can open each side one by one just to make sure there's no pressure left in the system even though it's showing zero there might be a bit of water still left in there and then can swap out the pump valves, the pump and everything. So let's get this done.
Okay, pumps done, new AAV. So I've left the pump that way, facing that way, because it's easier for me to get the connector plug in from this side. And also, if I faced it that way, then I would have struggled to get to that pump valve. So there's method to my madness. And I've checked in the MIs. You can have the pump facing that way. There we go, middle one there. So horizontal, you can have it facing that way as long as it's not facing up or down because that's where the pump will trap air. So as long as it's on its side, then that's not a problem. So let's top up some pressure now. Uh, filling loop is there. So I'm gonna top it up and um, I'm gonna have to open any of this. I think I might have to open the zone valve because that's on the return. Mm, no, it should still fill up through the return. Right, it's operating that halfway. Let's keep an eye on the pressure and the pump valves. Make sure we've got nothing leaking. That vessel is fine as well. It's a new one because there's a box with an old vessel there. Oh, we're at half a bar, and so far, so good. So, just gonna let that pressurize and then open up the pump valves and uh, get the boiler on, open up the zone valves, and just test everything, make sure everything's working, and check that PRV. I'll crack the nut on there as well. Well, we are all good. Boiler's up and running. I've left it running for a little while while I was packing up and stuff, just wanted to make sure. Everything's good, and it is. Radios are getting warm, getting heat. Both zone valves have opened. We're getting heat through both of them. We've got no leaks on the pump. Pump is spinning fine. AAV is all good as well, and pressure's holding. So that's that job done. Let's get out of here. <laughs>